It's Easter today. Hopefully some people chime in. It's a beautiful Easter day after a fucking crazy amount of snowfall. So I decided to do this video on my on my personal page tonight because it's Easter and I don't think I'd get any interaction on the other page. So just say hi if you're here and I'm going to just start running my mouth about some shit. I'm going to start off talking about kidney stones today. Because I know a lot of people suffer from kidney stones. They've had kidney stones. Um, so with dry fasting, there's one thing that can happen. If you don't know what you're fucking doing, the way you prep and the way you basically finish the dry fast. Um, when you start the dry fast, the way I do it is there's a cucumber, okay? <laughs> so this one's a big one, like fucking 18 inch, maybe, I don't know. So anyway, this cucumber is like probably, I don't know, probably like 500 grams of water. So this cucumber is equal to 500 grams of water. Basically, because a cucumber is about 97% water. So when I prep for a long fast, whether it's a dry fast or a wet fast, I don't really wet fast so much anymore. Mostly it's just dry fasting. I'll eat these, and then I'll eat a fucking shitload of these. These. See these? These are lemons. I ate a lot of lemons. So today... I don't like to tell people this, but I made a bet with a guy before Donald Trump won the election for $100. And I won. And I, the bet was 100 bucks, and he happens to own a pizza joint in my hometown where I am right now. And so instead of him paying me $100, he made me two 16-inch loaded to the nuts pizzas that were probably worth like 35, 40 bucks each. So today I happen to be in my hometown again and I went and took him up on my second pizza. And I know, like, I basically laid on my... This is how bad fucking carbs are, like that. I, pre I prepped for this. Like, I knew that I was going to eat this pizza today. Because it's still food. It's free food that I don't have to go buy at the store right now. Because it's like, it's fucking... I'm never going to be in Drayton again. And it's, it's... Obviously, it's like... It's not... It's fucking still calories. It's not completely dirty. But it makes you feel like shit. There's no doubt about it, okay? So, these, what I'm going to do tomorrow. So, I ate a fucking three kilogram pizza tonight. And I basically laid on my ass all afternoon napping. I feel decent now, but my gut's like fucking, I'm full. So, tomorrow night, I'm going to fast till tomorrow night. And then I'm going to eat two bags of fucking lemons. Two whole bags of lemons. So, I'm... I'm not quite sure how I'm going to eat them. I've been pounding back like six, five, six lemons at a time at night. But this is one bag. This bag's two pounds. So without, this, without the peels, you're probably looking at like a pound and a half. So two bags is going to be about two kilos of lemon. So that's going to be my fluid. And then I'm going to use that to start a little bit of a... I, I don't want to call it... It's not a water fast because I'm probably going to be eating cucumbers. But what I'll do is to do like a really healthy cut because I want to train really hard. These cucumbers have a shitload of potassium. I can't remember exactly what they are. I think they're close to like 250 milligrams of potassium per 100 grams. So a kilo of cucumbers is going to run you about 2,500. So if I eat like a shitload of lemons and these cucumbers, it preps me perfectly. If you're going to do a dry fast, it preps me perfectly, okay? Now, this... Vinegar here is Bragg apple cider vinegar, and this may be arguably the best fucking thing for kidney stones. This and these lemons, because what happens, you'll get a diff some different types of kidney stones, um, but one main one's obviously it's going to be some calcium buildup, and this lemon juice, the nitri or the citrates from the lemon juice and apple cider vinegar will actually dissolve those stones. So combined with some long fasting, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to do like a lemon juice, like a true fucking lemon juice fast. 
where I'm going to pound lemons and pound this vinegar. So I'm going to eat like two kilos of lemons and probably have like at least six to eight tablespoons of this fucking vinegar all in one shot. And people keep commenting on my nails. Yeah, they're pretty fucking awesome. She did a good job this time. They're not chipping. Okay? So that's what I'm going to be doing. And that is how, if you're going to start a dry fast, either you're going to do it with liquid, with baking soda and vinegar and lemons, or you could do it with, say, cucumbers, lemons, vinegar, and baking soda. Now, the baking soda, I'll, I'll take afterwards. So, that'll alkalize the shit out of my blood and my kidneys. So, you're basically getting rid of any, you're getting the acidity way down. Because when you dry fast for a long time, it gets the acidity up in your kidneys. And that's why it's very important to alkalize after you've done a long dry fast with, with baking soda. You got to go look up the benefits of baking soda. It's fucking amazing. But one thing, because I keep seeing people talking about baking soda, the reason I was dodging the topic for a while is because people are fucking lazy and they like the quick relief and baking soda gives you extremely quick relief from fucking heartburn. Problem is, like, let's say it's fucking Easter. People are chowing down their cheesecake and all their other fucking garbage and they're gonna have heartburn. I guarantee they're gonna have fucking heartburn from all the sugar tonight or whatever night they're eating all this trash every night for most people. Somebody's just trying to call me, fuck. So anyway, um, I just got sidetracked here. Uh, <laughs> somebody just messaged me about a fucking house fire that I'm guessing it might, I don't know, it might be from where I used to live. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so Fuck, I'm just going to talk about that. This is way the fuck off topic. Um, so, I was living with a good friend for a while. And he's had some issues with, like, drugs with, you know, uh, like, just all sorts of drugs. But because he's, he's, he's injured, eh? He hurt his back. You know, he's hurt his back. He broke his back twice. He, he's seen a couple people die. Like, they died, like, basically right in his fucking house. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I am now because I'm getting these fucking calls and shirts about that. So anyway, he was having some issues and he had an episode the other day where it was like basically like almost like fucking schizophrenia. And so then what happened is I was trying to help him, blah, blah, blah. And then it happened again the other day. And because I live such a minimalistic lifestyle, I basically packed up and left yesterday. I kind of knew that was coming. That's kind of why I was went on Facebook and I put up that I was moving out and I was looking for somebody to maybe go live with. So, um, fuck, I just seen this text pop up on my phone as I'm doing this video and this girl that knows him really good says there was a house fire or some shit. And I'm wondering if it was his house. So, I might have to cut this short. <laughs> but, um, fuck. So anyway, what happened there is he was having an episode again yesterday and I left. Like I packed up all my shit and fucked off. And what I was going to get into there is basically the drugs that the doctors were giving him. It was like Oxycontins and fucking all this other shit. Like tons of fucking drugs for bipolar issues. And really the issue is just his fucking bad lifestyle. You know, fucked up hormones, things like this. And um, he... Like, it's very sad, kind of, when you see somebody that you care about and they get all fucked up like that and then they're, they're completely paranoid and they think that people are after them and trying to kill them and fucking shit like this. Like, it was pretty hardcore. And, uh, so, I left. So now, I'm going to be moving probably to Sylvan Lake here for the summer, which is going to be interesting. I got people asking me about this now. So the one girl asked, said apple cider vinegar for heartburn. Because I know I'm not going to worry too much with the house thing because I'm almost positive what that's about. But the apple cider vinegar will help your stomach. Okay, if you have stomach issues, it definitely will. Because a lot of times what happens when you have heartburn in the first place is because your stomach acid is too low. Your pH is not high enough or is not low enough. Acidity is low pH, basic. When your stomach is basic, it's high pH. So when your stomach is too basic, basically your small intestine is going to shoot acid up into your fucking stomach and it's going to give you fucking heartburn because you're, you're basically your diet's fucking garbage. That's why that happens. So apple cider vinegar is something that will fix that. But the main thing that will fix that is your fucking garbage diet. Cut out the sugar, right? 
And then the other thing is baking soda because it's so alkaline, it'll alkalize the shit out of your fucking stomach and give you like this. It's so alkaline that it basically makes it so there's no fucking acidity. So even though you still got the problem, you, all you did is basically completely fucking killed the acidity of your stomach with the baking soda and made a situation where you're not going to digest food where the shit to the baking soda is through your system. That's why you do not take baking soda around your meals. Do not take baking soda around your meals. Now, to have like a table, a teaspoon of baking soda every few days for good health, there's a lot of things that show like with cancer and things because you know if your body, like you got different alkalinities or pHs throughout your whole body, like your urine, your saliva, your blood, everything's different. But in general, your blood, you want, you want to be a certain alkalinity in all those areas and, and uh, baking soda helps regulate that. And that will cause a situation where it's harder for cancer to survive. So that's why baking soda is very good for that reason, okay? So I'm just going to go back and take a look at these questions here. Oh yeah, I don't have my fucking hot rod snake diet shirt on today because obviously I fucked off yesterday and packed all my shit up and stuff that my car's stuff full. But it was just a classic example how, you know, like the doctors will feed you and feed you and feed you fucking drugs until you're all fucked up and then you never get the proper help you're looking for, you know, and then you're fucking running around on the fucking street and like you're just almost fucking basically having a complete fucking episode where you don't know what you're fucking doing. You're, you're just, you know, this is like, this is the side effects of some of this shit, especially like there's this opioid epidemic now is fucking insane. Everyone's getting their hands on that crap. Okay. Like drugs and doctors that give you fucking drugs all the time for your pain. They're not doing you any favors at all. It's a fucking goddamn joke. And I seen it firsthand something fierce in this last two weeks. And it got to the point yesterday where, you know, if I wouldn't have fucking left when I did, I probably would have fucking killed him because I was getting so angry. But I, I, you know, I was patient because I knew that something was deeper, like something was wrong more on a deeper level. And, uh, yeah, and that's, kind of what happened there and I you know I got a hold of my he's my friend right he's my friend I've had other friends in the drugs in the past and you know that's fucking what drugs fucking do to you that's what they do and you get in that borderline you get in that fucking downward spiral and you can't stop it and you're just pounding pounding drugs and you got fucked up back you got fucked up you know you're just always it have issues you got heartburn you got everything like every fucking thing you know you can't sleep then you're then you're insomniac and then you look unhealthy as fuck and you're the same age as me and your face is fucking red because your blood pressure is so fucking high. And then you're, then you're completely reckless, like where you start not caring about things and you start wrecking everything and, and next thing you know you're in the fucking nut house for fucking two weeks and then they're fucking, you know, that's what happens. That's what fucking happens. Right? So, but these lemons now back on, onto the points I want to get out here are these lemons. Um, these lemons is one of the best way for kid. If you have kidney stones, lemons are the ticket. Okay. And don't be a fucking pansy. I know lemons are sour, but you get used to it. And they're actually kind of like, I, I actually enjoy eating them now and it hydrates you so well. Your mouth just feels moist when you eat lots of lemons. So now what I'm going to talk about is fucking strength training a little bit today. Cause I keep getting these questions about fasting and building muscle. Okay. So here's the thing. It's impossible, it's impossible to fucking cut to a very lean body fat percentage while still being strong and not being on drugs, eating six fucking meals a day. It is fucking impossible. The only people in the world that can, that can do that, and even then, the, how lean they are is question like how strong they are is questionable is extremely high level athletes that are putting this crazy crazy volume on their body because the amount of anaerobic cardio they do their metabolism is just, is just so fucking fast from the insane training that they can actually stay lean eating six times a day all right but your average person it's fucking impossible and that is why Everybody is always saying shit like you're just going to gain back the weight. You're just, always, because what happens is when you eat six times a day at a massive caloric deficit, 
you will lose muscle mass. It's that fucking simple. Now let's talk about building muscle and fasting. The most anabolic, that means when your body is able to build muscle, when you're anabolic, building muscle, catabolic is when your body's chewing on muscle. You're the most anabolic, let's say completely natural, no drugs, no nothing. You're going to be able to build muscle the best when you are fasting at least, at least as long as you can in the day to where you're getting enough caloric intake to slightly gain weight ever so slightly on a trend to the point where you're gaining weight and then if you become a little overweight, then you just cut the food back a little bit. But the, um, the anabolic side of things is going to be from the fasting. You're going to build muscle better fucking fasting, eating the same food in a tight eating window than you would not fasting, eating the exact same amount of food throughout the day. You will not build muscle as good when you're eating multiple meals a day. I'm walking proof of this. I've tried everything before to be as strong as I could be and still like eat multiple meals a day because that's what I thought was right and it didn't work. Every time I would try to cut calories eating multiple meals a day, I would fucking lose strength every single fucking time. Let me say that again. Every time I would try and cut body fat, eating a multiple meal a day routine, it doesn't matter if it's fucking fat, carbs, or what. Multiple meal a day routine from morning to night, cutting calories aggressively enough that I'm losing weight, I would get fucking weak every single time. This diet, this way of life is the fasting aspect is what counts. I have a guy today I talked to. He's eating carbs. Why is he eating carbs? Because he, he gets, you get more explosive strength eating a little bit of carb. And he's, a, he's six feet tall, 170. We do not give a fuck about weight loss. We want him to build muscle. The best way he's going to build muscle is he's going to keep his protein fixed, probably 300 grams a day, maybe 400 grams a day, fatty meat. We do not. We want him to eat like a horse, but we want him to eat all of it in the tightest windows we can so we still reap the benefits of the fasting aspect, cranking up the testosterone and growth hormone. And then we're going to have him eating about 100 grams of complex carbohydrates with lots of fat. Okay? Those will not get stored as liver glycogen as easy as fucking fructose. So we're talking combinations, molecules of glucose, okay? Glucose molecules in the carb. That's what we want. So he's eating. He's gonna, we're trying a small amount of carb, about 100 grams of carbs, okay? So like I said to every other person on here that just keeps saying this is like keto. It's not like fucking keto. I got him eating 100 grams of carbs, Okay, we don't give a fuck about ketosis right now. He's, but the cool part is, is because he's eating in like a three hour window every day, he's still gonna be in ketosis for like 60% of the day. And even though it doesn't show up on his urine strips. It doesn't have to show up on your fucking urine strips. That just means you're in excess ketones to where your blood, your kidneys are actually sweeping out the extra ketones. It doesn't have to show up. The reason I ride people about showing the color on the strips because most of the people I deal with are fucking fat. Fat people, the best combination is going to be high, is going to be low carb. I don't even like saying high fat. It's going to be basically no fucking food. It's going to be low carb, like no carbs. That's the diet, low carbs. And tons of fasting time is going to be the optimal routine for a fat person. Now for somebody like this guy that's six feet tall, 170, we don't give a fuck about fucking trying to lose weight. We're trying to gain some weight and get stronger. We don't even care. I, well, I'd like to see him put on 10 pounds just to see if he can do it. Even if it's 10 pounds of fat. Because the interesting part, what's my weight right now? So my weight right this second is fat as fuck because I ate like six pounds of pizza at lunch. So my weight right now fast is about 177. And so I've been trying to gain weight the last week, okay? last week and a half, maybe even two weeks, because I'm trying to prep for a long dry fast, because I want to do a 10 day dry fast like some of the other girls are trying to do, but I can't. I couldn't when I'm at, when I'm at like 8% body fat or 9%. I'm too lean to do that long dry fast. So what I'm doing 
is I'm doing a massive volume routine in the gym where I'm hitting lots of volume and I'm actually trying to pack on weight. I'm going to try to get to where I'm probably about 185 fasted. 185 fasted and then I'm going to do this 10 day dry fast. And the cool part is, this is I, the snake diet movie I want to make is going to be pretty awesome now. So I just gave a young fella, basically I bought camera gear worth $2,000. I gave it away for free yesterday and trade for labor, you could say, to help me make a movie. So this young fella that's gonna that's gonna do some taping for me, I gave him all this camera gear for free, and I'm moving to Sylvan Lake. So I'm probably gonna try to do the dry fast when I get settled up in Sylvan Lake in the next, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks, and then I'll probably be at my weight that I wanna be at. And then what I'm gonna do is he's gonna stay with me for 10 days. And he's gonna fucking film me dry fast in this whole goddamn time. I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna do seven or ten day. But anyway, it's gonna be at least seven days. Depending what my weight does, if it's fucking dropping off the face of the earth, then I won't go ten, right? Because I'm I'd be smart about it. So what I'm gonna do is he's gonna film me. It's gonna be cool because it's like there's a beach there. I'm gonna be living like, you know, ten minutes from the beach and shit. And thanks to my buddy Dan, he's the one that gave me the place. And I had a whole bunch of people offering me places to live, but I'm actually getting kind of sick of the city because it seems like since I started dry fast and I want to be out in the fucking country again. So I figured some place like that with water would be cool. It's just less stress. You don't have to drive hardly at all. I can walk everywhere. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fast. He's going to basically live with me for the week, film me. And then what he's going to do is there's going to be some specific people, like perhaps Bailey that's chiming in right now. There's going to be some specific people. He's going to go around and do little interviews with them. So I got a couple people that are going to have like, like for sure the one girl is going to have her type 2 diabetes. It's like going to be fully reversed. She's definitely going to be on there for an interview. I got another lady with kids that are fasting. I got maybe the girl here, Bailey, that made my logo. Um, you know, maybe her boyfriend. Um, you know, I got some people that I'm going to pick and he's going to go around and do these interviews and that's going to be the movie and it's going to be called Snake Diet. So like the, the a lot of the brunt of the movie a lot of it will be me doing this dry fast and talking about fasting and shit. And then there's going to be all these testimonials within the movie. Okay, so it'll be pretty fucking cool. So that's what I'm trying to raise a little bit of money for. But he's going to tape a lot of it and do all the, like a lot of the, he's going to do everything. Like, And I just gave away my fucking camera that was worth two grand. So, you know, I'm, it's paying it forward. I just had it sitting there because I don't ever use it. Um, she asked a question. Also, I'm doing a 10 day fast with the other girls. So yeah, so what you should do tonight if you're starting, just do this. Pound a whole, go get some lemons, pound, like blend them up, drink the lemon juice, okay? Then knock back a bunch of apple cider vinegar and then let that settle for a bit and even knock back a little water with that and then maybe like an hour or hour and a half later, knock back a good, I don't know, even go with two, three, teaspoons of baking soda and then chug a whole bunch more water and it'll prep your kidneys for the long dry fast because once you're into the dry fast it's all good because you're not urinating hardly at all anyway and so like that once you're not urinating your kidneys nothing's happening really your kidneys go to sleep essentially that's why dry fasting is so good for your kidneys and then when you come out of the dry fast understand that if you actually do a fucking 10 day dry fast we're all be impressed if people actually get through that that'll be hard um, you got to take your time getting back. Don't jump into the fucking gym right away because you could pull a muscle because your body's been sleeping for 10 days. Like you'll see what I mean once you get to day like four, day five. Um, and then once you get off the dry fast, the best thing you can do is what I would do is definitely start knocking back baking soda again. And then there's a lot of different routines. I've seen people knock back grape juice, but if you want to stay away from the sugar, pound back a bunch of baking soda, then maybe even once you've let that sit in your body for like, do a little 12 hour like re-water, almost like rehydration. don't eat no food after 10 days, it's a long fucking dry fast, man. And then start maybe eating some cucumbers um, to get your potassium back because that's gonna be the main thing, the baking soda's not gonna give you your potassium back, you'll feel a bit better from the water, but the potassium you'll start pulling from the cucumbers. And then you can stay away from the sugar because technically that's exactly what you wanted to get out of your body in the first place is the fucking sugar, right? Um, okay, so let's see what the clock's saying here. 
two seconds here. Yeah, so that's the main thing there. So we're gonna, so I'm excited about doing this movie. And, um, yeah, it's gonna be cool because we're right on the beach. I can walk to the fucking beach. We're gonna be, I'm gonna be training there still. I still gotta pass the one Good Life Fitness from Edmonton and I can drive to Red Deer and go train there. And another thing, I was gonna get into the training a little more because I started talking about it. So, anabolic. So, the best fucking way if you're trying to get strong, eat like a fucking horse. If you're not worried about your weight, if you're not worried about your body weight, just try to eat like a horse. Keep the protein fixed. When I say protein, I should say meat. Meat, 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 meat. Don't worry about the protein or all the other shit. Meat, okay? Keep the meat fixed and then eat basically as much vegetables as you want and then eat like, you know, maybe start out with 100 grams of carbohydrate but complex carbs, no fructose because that'll fucking basically re replenish your liver very quick. So complex carbs, rice is going to be one of the best. Okay? And then just eat like a horse. See how you feel in the gym. Log your food. Log the amounts, like if you eat this much rice, log it. And then if you start packing on a little weight, but you aren't getting fatter, that's good. Okay, if you're not getting fatter and you're getting a little heavier, that's not a bad thing. You probably put on some muscle. It won't happen super quick, but you might put on a pound of muscle in a month if you're a beginner. And then if you start looking like, if you start feeling like the weight's going up too quick, just creep the food back. It's that easy, but you're always going to be more anabolic. Don't listen to all the bullshit where it's like, Oh, I gotta take fucking BCAs after I work out. I gotta take protein right after I work out. It's bullshit. Because when you eat, you have ate beforehand and you got so much fucking protein in your system, it's not even funny. You got so many branched chain amino acid systems, uh, amino acids in your body, it's not even funny either. Because especially if you're eating steak and eggs. You know, you wanna eat the fatty meat. Stay away from chicken breasts. And that's funny because the mainstream is like, oh, eat chicken breast, rice, and fucking vegetables six times a day. See where that diet gets you. See where that fucking diet gets you <coughs> when you're not on drugs. I fucking did it. I even did it more strict than that. Six times a day. Fuck, I was eating 20 times a day. Because what I did is I would eat this pot of oatmeal for breakfast, with, which is what they tell you to eat. So I'd eat this pot of oatmeal with some berries in it, and a little bit of coconut oil. That was my breakfast. Then I would make this fucking bass of Tupperware that had like three chicken breasts in it, a bunch of fucking rice, a bunch of veggies, and I'd be at the gym training people for about nine hours a day, or eight hours. Well, I was there for 10. So I would eat this shit all day. So you wanna talk about seven meals in a day? I was eating like, I was probably sitting down nine times. So like talk about breaking it down. And then guess what happened? I lost like fucking 10 pounds and got weak. And that's what I knew was bullshit. Not to mention I had a fucking hemorrhoid issue that I fucking, that happened because a bad diet beforehand happened at a powerlifting meet that didn't heal up because of this fucking stupid fucking diet. Cause as soon as you eat six times a day, guess what you're doing? You're spiking your insulin every fucking two seconds and promoting inf inflammation. So nothing can heal. As soon as you're promoting inflammation, how the fuck are your fucking hemorrhoids or some shit gonna fucking heal or a skin condition or a anything? It's not gonna heal. As soon as you promote inflammation, and that's what you're doing, eating six fucking times a day, eating carbs in every meal. Now at least if you eat carbs, if you're eating one meal a day and trying to gain muscle because you're skinny little fucking twig, that's at least you're gonna spike your insulin one time and it's gonna fall down and you're still gonna have very low inflammation throughout the day. Okay, that's the whole thing. That's why the long fasting periods is key. Keeps your inflammation so low, so low. You never have fucking issues with fucking sickness and shit because your body will just beat all that crap. Inflammation's the killer. And what do you think sugar does? Causes inflammation. Everything, it's all inflammation. Like you go, every fucking thing is direct fucking result of that down there. And it's all because you eat sugar. It's almost all because of fucking sugar or whatever else you're doing to abuse your body. Lack of sleep, you know, high cortisol levels, things like that. It's all going to be the same fucking bullshit. And this is why don't mix this up with a ketogenic fucking mainstream diet. Because with this, I can actually eat carbs on this diet, eat clean carbs like rice, and I will be in ketosis more 
than the person on the fucking keto diet. I will be burning more body fat because of the fasting aspect is way more overpowering over the high fat aspect. It doesn't even compete. That's why people are on the ketogenic fucking groups and they're coming over to the snake diet group and they're seeing 20 times the results. And some of them are still cheating on their fucking nutrition because they're fasting so long that just fucking the body fat just melts off you. See, if you eat six times a day keto, you're just not going to see the fucking result. No matter what, because even though you're keeping your body in ketosis, you're still not reaping the benefits of the fasting, like the increase in GH, the fucking massive crank up in metabolism. You're not going to get any of those benefits. Not to mention like people with gout. If you want to talk about inflammation, like fucking gout, apple cider vinegar, or baking soda, lemons, apple cider vinegar, especially the baking soda for gout. Okay, because it's high uric acid issues, because your fucking diet's garbage, because you're fucking drunk. Okay, all these little things that you all have, like type 2 diabetes, fucking gout, fucking heartburn, uh, the, all the stupid scientific names they come up with with all the other bullshit little syndromes you have. All these things can be fucking fixed. You know, like all of them. Every, like every fucking thing. Skin issues. How many fucking lotions and Vaselines and shit are they giving you for your fucking skin issue that can be fixed with dry fasting? You know, how many... Like all the, what else, what else, like fucking come up with some shit. Like there's so many fucking things that people try to do to compensate bad diet and no fasting. It's always the same nonsense. Like I'm, most of you that know me, I'm way more of a hard ass on camera than I am just to get my fucking point across because people don't listen. But you know, it's like you see these people every day and I can't fucking even bear it. I just want to be like, shut the fuck. Fuck up, you're a fucking pussy. You're fucking on meds. The doctor's telling you to take your meds. It's like everyone always uses the names to relate to people's issues. That's how brainwashed they are. When they don't need to fucking do anything but fast. Like, you could eat. Like, I don't want to promote eating garbage, obviously. But that's how good fasting works. You can eat complete fucking junk. Oh, fuck, by the way, let's fucking... Okay. Okay, this will be a good little thing to... See this Bragg apple cider vinegar? This Bragg apple cider vinegar. Wait two seconds. So obviously I can't do my hardcore. Yeah, cold sores even too. That's fucking herpes. If you got cold sores, you got fucking herpes. Fucking dry fast. It'll kill it. It'll... Like, I know, I don't want to get into it, but I have people that I was getting to fast and drink piss. Herpes is gone in like two weeks. And I'm talking serious fucking herpes on people's balls. Gone. Gone. Like, you'll never get a cold sore again if you drive fast. Because it's just an immune, your immune system being weakened and inflammation will cause them to sprout up if you have it. But then you can actually kill the issue. You can kill, you can kill herpes. There's HSV1, HSV2, you can kill them both. So, for all you people that bitch about apple cider vinegar, so you got vinegar and I got some water here. The reason I'm drinking a bunch of water is because I'm at my sister's right now and I can't like go buy like 100 fucking kilograms of vegetables because I'm not going to be here long. So, here's the vinegar and I'm going to take a nice shot of this shit and then show you crybabies how it's, like it, you don't really want to do it this way because you can feel it in your throat a bit. But if you want, you can just... So this is like a brand new bottle, okay? And the only reason I'd wash it back because it dries your throat out, but I'll probably drink like maybe four tablespoons. And then just shoot it back. See, I actually, you know what's funny? I actually like the taste of this stuff. The only thing is when you drink it like that, it like burns the back of your throat a little bit. So normally what I recommend is you just take a tablespoon, put it in the tablespoon, and put it in your mouth and just gulp it. Right? But yeah, this vinegar, this shit is so fucking good for you. If you read, it will scar your esophagus, 
I take it all the time like that. No, this is the thing. Obviously, say if you're knocking it back. Like, I just took a big gulp there. Like, see that? That was a brand new bottle. I just drank probably like five tablespoons. And you can feel it. Like, it'll burn your throat a bit, but it'll just go away as soon as you drink the fucking water. It just rinses it out. It's no worse than drinking fucking straight whiskey. Like, I've drank straight whiskey in my day. It doesn't feel any different than that. So, yeah, you like drinking straight whiskey too, I bet, eh? <laughs> those truck, those girls that drive truck. Yeah, like drinking it straight's fine. Or like if you dilute it, it's probably worse. Like it's not gonna be worse, but it's more volume. So diluting it. But this stuff is so fucking good for your kidneys. If you go on YouTube and start looking up, you know what the best videos on YouTube now? Like anything mainstream has got a whole bunch of views. I don't even hardly watch anymore. It's like the old. It's like the old fucking Joker that's living out in the bush. Because you know this guy's not money-centered. So like this guy, literally this one guy, he's got some fucking concoction he made up for kidneys, stones, and it's basically like the same shit. Lemon juice, the apple cider vinegar, and the baking soda with other couple little fucking magic things he's got from the woods or whatever. And this guy, like, he's like, I don't know, he's some guy right out of the jungle, and he's got like this fucking picnic table, and he's just in the bush. Like, and he fucking doesn't care about money. And he, has, he even has people that are trying to impersonate him. Like, it's like, he had people using his pictures and sending texts. So, like, it's like, say somebody trying to steal my pictures and then sending text messages to somebody else saying, oh, do this, do this, blah, 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 and then proving that it's me by having a fake picture. People are actually stealing this guy's pictures. And he doesn't even charge money. So that's how all the people knew that it wasn't him. Because people, he was trying to, they were trying to charge like two or three grand for like his help and shit. And they knew it wasn't him because he doesn't charge anything. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. So I don't know how many of you guys go to the gym. <laughs> um, as far as the gym goes, like I said, if you're hitting some good volume, you just eat like, eat like a horse. Just try to eat as much food as you can in a small window. And if you can't get in all the potassium that you need through food, then you fucking start knocking back some potassium in your drink. And the reason I wanted to bring the vinegar out today, there's a good point. Drink the fucking vinegar. Don't be a goddamn crybaby. Because here's the thing. When you're, for the very aggressive fat loss, you're drinking water with some sodium. And you're drinking the no salt, which is potassium chloride. You're drinking the lemon juice that keeps your kidneys clean. You're drinking the vinegar that keeps your kidneys clean. And if you want, on occasion, especially if you're doing 48-hour fast, don't do this around your meals. Knock back a couple teaspoons of baking soda here and there. Okay? That's a perfect routine for aggressive fat loss. Now, if you're not worried about losing fat as aggressively, you can eat more fucking vegetables. A lot, well, not even just vegetables. You can eat just more calories in general via potassium-filled food. And then you can take less no salt in your water. Then you can drink less water. Okay, things like that. It all depends on your goal. Most of the people we're talking about on the group are fat people. Their goal is to lose fucking fat. The fastest way to lose fat is going to be to water fast with the potassium and the sodium combined with dry fasting. Just the dry fasting, eventually you'll hit that wall where your potassium will get to a point where it gets below a threshold where you basically have no fucking energy and then you just grind it out from there. So for those overweight that have physical jobs, it's just like how physical is your fucking job? Like I fucking do way more than you do, okay? You know what I mean? Like I hear this lots. Your job's not that physical because if it was, you'd never be overweight. It's pretty simple. So just the snake juice is lots, lots. Like I said before, I've done eight day water fast where I still trained. I've done fucking two day dry fast where I punched the fucking bag for half an hour probably throwing on average 60 punches a minute. You know, for say 20 of the 30 minutes was actual hitting the bag, like with rest. So do the math on the amount of punches I threw. I probably did more exercise in 30 minutes than you're doing two days worth of work. And I was dry fasted with no food. Okay, trust me on this. I'm fucking more, I'm way more active than most anybody you know, and I'm doing this stuff. And I'm fucking stronger than most anybody you know with no drugs doing the same shit. And I'm like 170 pounds. That's my optimal weight around that 168. Okay, so don't worry about your job ain't that physical. 
There's people that could work fucking rig work and do this shit. You want to talk about a physical job? Go fucking pull wrenches on a service rig for fucking 16 hours a day. And, like, those guys aren't fat. Because they, they fucking, and they fucking have a brutal lifestyle. Like, they have a brutal lifestyle. A lot of them drink and do drugs. And eat like shit. And they're lean. Now, that's a physical fucking job. A real physical, this is what I'm talking about with the high-level athletes. The reason they can get away with eating, like, multiple meals a day and eating all the calories because they fucking train so goddamn hard that they're just burning it up. But you, the reason you got fat in the first place is because you weren't burning it up. Your job's not that fucking physical, right? And once the weight is lost, having already been physical through work or not, how does it get back into working out without overdoing it? Well, the, you just go try it. Go, just go try it. Like you're already used to the fasting. If you go to the gym and you feel like you're a dog and you're, you have no energy in the gym, just crank up the food again, right? You're far from that. If you're 300 pounds, you have nothing to worry about. Talk to me when you're like 190 or 200. Because if you're that heavy, you've got so much body fat on you that you're not going to have a fucking issue. The first person that got, like, got back to me that had a real issue with energy was a guy that was 6 feet tall, 170. And right away, I wasn't actually helping him one-on-one. -on -one. So when he actually asked me for help, I'm like, right away, I'm like, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? He's like, 176 feet. And then he was, said that he was basically on the... On the like on the keto kick, trying to eat like one meal at night and drinking the snake juice. And right away I fixed them up. I'm like, eat fucking way more food. Let's throw hundred grams of carbs in there. We're not worried about fucking weight loss with you. Okay, if, if you're fucking three hundred pounds, don't worry about it. Fucking drink goddamn water with potassium and salt and you fucking could go a week without eating. As soon as you're once you get lean, then worry about it. Okay, and then and then just make sure you're getting the vegetables and you go fucking days and days and days. And the reason you guys are feeling cold sometimes is because when your body fat starts to break down, the free fatty acids, your blood will actually get in the fattier areas of your body to move the free fatty acids to the liver to make ketones. That's why you feel a little bit chilly like that. But if you're active, you fucking won't. If you actually go do some shit, you won't even have an issue. Okay, but remember that once you get lean, you won't have that issue. You won't have that issue because your body's not going to steal blood to these other extremities or other areas like it would if you're fat. Because you've got to remember, if you've got a big fat gut, and all of a sudden your body's breaking down this fat, and the only way to move the fucking free fatty acids to get to the liver to make ketones is by getting them in the bloodstream, naturally your body's going to dilate those blood vessels that are in the fattier areas to move the fucking ketones. So that's why you're feeling cold, basically is the gist of the theory, the way I understand it, which makes perfect sense. Because I never even had that issue really, because when I first started fasting, I wasn't overly overweight to start with. You know, I was about 190 pounds, which, you know, wasn't crazy, like, but as soon as I got down to 175 or whatever, like, I never even noticed that because I was so active throughout the day as well that it didn't, I didn't notice it, right? But if you're really overweight, you'll notice it for sure, okay? So just don't worry about the activity. Just fucking worry about not eating, especially if you're fat. Uh, what's this one say? Peter says, other than the salty, low-carb, high-fat meal, where else do we get sodium? Do we put... So here's the thing. I'm assuming that people are fat usually, okay? If you're fat, you're not that active, and the amount of sodium you need is going to be maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon to a teaspoon a day. So if you're eating every 48 hours, honestly, if you put a good amount of salt, like say if you had like eggs or veggies or cucumbers, if you went like with a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt in that meal, like how easy is it to sop up a half a teaspoon of salt on some cucumber chunks? And you'd have enough fucking sodium for two days because you're not that active, okay? You're not that active. So you don't, you're not gonna have an issue getting enough sodium in. Now, if you're like fucking running marathons every day, or you're very active, or you're sweating like a pig every day, that's gonna be different. But it's also gonna change if you're fat again, because if you're fat and you're breaking down the fat cells, you're gonna get also sodium from your body fat and potassium. So you gotta feel it out. One rule of thumb is basically, if you feel weak, don't go over 5,000 milligrams of potassium a day via the no salt. Don't do that. The other thing is, just play around with the salt a bit. If you feel good, just leave it at about, a, you know, a half, a quarter to a, a teaspoon, depending. 
If you sweat lots, your body will tell you if you want more salt too. You'll actually want the salt, the clean salt. Because also with the fasting, we're cleaning all the dirty salt out of your diet from back when you're eating just garbage and getting all that processed fucking salt in your body. So suggestions of someone who struggles with booze. So what's the problem? So like, do you drink? Like, if you struggle with booze, don't put yourself in that situation. Okay, stay out of the fucking bar. Right? Stay out of the, if the, if the bar food. If you're at the bar, you're gonna eat bar food. If you're not at the bar, you're not gonna eat bar food. It's pretty simple. So if you're if you're fucking drunk, surround yourself with people that aren't drunks. If you're hanging around with drunks all the time, you're going to be a drunk unless you have crazy willpower. Just like if you're fucking, if you're hanging around with fat people all the time, you're probably going to end up being fat. Usually that's how it works, sadly enough. If you're a fat person, you go hang around with athletes, you're going to fucking turn into an athlete. It's so simple. Who meets friends nightly? Soccer fan. What the fuck? I don't understand what you're saying there. So... It's social circle stuff though, right? Social circle issues. Cut people out of your fucking life that are dragging you down. Cut them out. That's what I did yesterday. You know, he's a good friend of mine, my friend. He's having issues. And I still care about him. That's why I got a hold of his dad and all sorts of other things. But I left because it was a fucking headache. And I couldn't handle it anymore. And that's, I drop people like a fucking bad habit now. Like, it's like if fucking people fuck me around and they're not leading the lifestyle I live. Bye. See ya. Fucking bye. You know, you got to be able to cut people out of your life. And if you're scared of being alone, you got to learn how to meet new friends. Um, is two liters of water enough through the day if, if I fast past 48? So, that's a good... You can make... Two, if you're fat... You got to remember any water you don't get in that your body needs is going to take it from body fat. Okay, because you have a ton of water on your gut just like when we talk about not getting in the food. Like when people are like, I need my calories. You don't need any fucking calories if you're fat. Just like if you're fat, you don't need any water. You need a lot less. So what you do, you decide how much you're going to drink and see how you feel. So start out with a liter and a half if you're a female and see how you feel. Okay? If you feel good drinking a liter and a half, then drink a liter and a half every day. If you feel like you needed more water, like you can't sleep at night because you're thirsty as fuck, then drink more the next day. Just don't take any more than two teaspoons of potassium in the day. Does that make sense? So start, you pick how much water you're going to drink. Don't let the, don't let the, don't let the day pick your water. You pick the water at the start of the day. Be like, I'm going to drink a liter and a half. And then fucking start drinking water after lunch. And be like, I'm going to drink a liter and a half of fucking water today. And then if you feel good that day, keep drinking the liter and a half. If you feel like you need more water the next day, bump it up to 1.75 or 2 liters. It's simple. Okay? Because any water that you're not getting in your body is going to be made up by your body fat breaking down. Because you know how people are holding all this water? Like the one girl, I keep trying to get it through her head. That your body, if you're really obese... Your body could be holding crazy amounts of water. You could have been burning fat all week. All right? And then let's say if your body is in water holding mode, so your body it wants to hold water, you could easily dry fast for five days, kick like 10 pounds of water, right? So let's say you lost like in five days, let's say you lost like, I don't know, let's say two, let's take one and a half pounds of true body fat. Then let's say you lost five kilos of water, five liters of water. If your body is in water storing mode, as soon as you start drinking water again, guess what's going to happen? You're going to restore that five fucking liters or kilos of water in like one fucking day because your body does not want to let go of the water at that time. It's that simple. When your body is ready to let go of the water, it'll let go of the fucking water. Your body will just keep stashing every fucking ounce you put in your mouth. That's why if you log your water, you'll know exactly what the fuck's going on. Like example, this is a liter and a half of water. It's 1.5 kilos, right? So if I weigh myself, let's say tonight at 8, and I drank the whole 1.5 kilos 
after I weigh myself and I eat nothing, I will weigh 1.5 kilos more than I weighed before I drank the water. Do we agree on this? Yes. The next morning, when I weigh myself, if I weigh almost the same as I weighed the night before, if I didn't urinate, I know that I'm going to weigh almost the same other than breathing out maybe 400 grams of water or whatever it ends up working out to at night. Then you know exactly what your body's doing. If you pissed a bunch that night, you know that your body's not in water holding mode. It's that simple with the water. People keep freaking out about their body weight. Your body, is if it's in water holding mode, every fucking ounce of water you drink will be stored. Simple as that. And if you're low on electrolytes, it's your body's going to think you need more electrolytes and it will store water because it thinks that you're going to get them through the water. This is exactly why tap water is so bad because there's nothing in it. It's junk. Okay, that's how water works. Fuck people. Log everything. Because I get asked that same question. Why aren't I losing weight? Your strips are showing dark. You're not eating any fucking food. You're losing body fat. I can tell you that right now. Strips are dark. You're eating nothing rarely. Like you're eating 400 calories a day. You're obviously losing fucking body fat. It's not rocket science, okay? You're not dead. You're not sitting completely still all day. I guarantee you're burning more calories than 400 fucking calories in the day. So the only fucking thing that's going to make you hold body weight is water. That's it. And to prove it, you can do like a two or three or four day dry fast and you will see your weight drop off the face of the fucking earth. And if you want to get aggressive with it, after the dry fast, you would basically knock back some baking soda, vinegar, lemon juice, dry fast again. Get your body water adapted and then maybe your body will start kicking water faster if you want to try to speed up the process. Or else you just have to wait. And depending on what your body's going through, now I have a challenge for all you women out there. This next week, I want to see if a girl can actually lose weight during her period. If you can lose weight during your period, then you know that you got your shit together. Because you know that your body's storing water, so you know you can dry fast during your period and you won't gain any weight. You should be able to lose weight during your period. Don't rationalize that you're just automatically going to gain fucking weight. Okay? You don't have to. You don't have to gain weight during your period. I'll tell you right now that if I just did not drink water and I did a five-day dry fast during my fucking period, I tell you if I was 170 pounds at the start of my period and I drank zero water for five days, I am going to be lighter than 170 when it comes five days down the road and I was on my period. It's not magic. You just fucking basically forced your body to use up water. It's because when you're in your period, you're probably even trying to be in water storing mode or whatever hormones are doing. If you pull back on the water, you're going to fucking keep the weight off. You're not going to fucking, you're not going to balloon up. You're not going to have all that inflammation or all that you're not going to get all fucking blown up. Basically, I'll blow it up. Blow it up. And that's why, people, if your rings aren't fitting on your hands and shit, fucking dry fast. It's the quickest way to get the water out of the joints. Okay? Inflammation does not exist without water. You want water, but you got to time it properly. If you time your water properly, you can get much better hydration and not get the bloating from pounding water back all the time, depending with what foods you eat. Um, my children did seven days, people, exactly. Like your kids did a seven day dry fast for fuck's sakes. You know, her kids, her kids. If, if the kids can do a seven day dry fast, which is awesome because that's where the problem starts when you're a kid. When you're a kid, that's where the whole fucking eating disorder starts. Eating disorder meaning you fucking overeat and you eat everything in sight. That's an eating disorder, okay? That is an eating disorder. <laughs> So if that, does that make sense? Log your fucking water and you'll know what's up. And that's the challenge I have. Let's see what girl can lose weight during her period. And it's easy because all you do is you plan a dry fast right at the start of your fucking period and you don't drink any water. And, and, you'll, be, and you'll probably feel great because you won't be all fucking bloated up. And then also it fucking holds you accountable to not eating any garbage. Because usually that's the reason people gain a bunch of weight on their period anyways because they ate a bunch of shit. And don't call it shark week. It's just a rationalization for you to be an asshole on your period. 
Just call it your fucking period. Like, it's just like, see what I mean? How it rationalizes it? It's like, oh, I'm on Shark Week. I can be a bitch. You know, don't call it Shark Week, Shark Week because it gives you that excuse. It gives you that excuse to kind of just fucking do whatever you fucking well want. And that's not the case. Okay? So, yeah, let's see. I don't know. Whoever has their period coming up, let's see. Like, I know there's going to be some of the girls doing this 10-day dry fast. There's got to be somebody on their fucking period. And it's going to be interesting because... It's going to be interesting because I guarantee you, you can't not lose weight. <laughs> like, you can't not lose weight on your period if you're fucking dry fasting. It's fucking impossible. It's impossible. Okay? You should be like, hey, I lost fucking five pounds on Shark Week. I'm going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm going to be in the fucking Guinness Book of World Records because I lost five pounds during Shark Week. Because Shark Week's kind of bullshit then, isn't it, for as far as everybody gaining fucking weight. There you go. Christine's going to test it. So we'll, we'll log that. And then maybe I'll even make a post and people can put their names on the list and they can put their starting weight at the start of their period. They can put their end weight. And I will guarantee if you dry fast, you will fucking lose weight. Okay? So, um, yeah, and... Also, like for my movie, obviously, I got my GoFundMe up. I'm going to change the way I have it written up now. But I'm really excited about trying to find the people I'm going to do the testimonials with. Because the coolest part is, is that I get so many people that are asking me about um, just how you do the diet. It's really hard to tell people actually how to do the diet. It's like, don't eat. You know, unless it's somebody that's lean that wants to, like, get more into the nitty-gritty with macros. It's like, if you're fat, it's like, don't fucking eat, man. It's like, just fucking, just eat vegetables every 48 hours for four hours out of the day. Like, you don't need to eat a fucking thing. You know, people, like, it's like, not rock, it's like, it's like people are getting such good results that they think there's actually something, like, some magic fucking, magic, like, some magic key to this. It's like, how are these people losing this kind of weight? It's, it's, is it magic? Like, what are they doing? Nothing. They're not eating. They're truly not eating, though. It's not like they're fucking having a fucking little snack that's like 50 calories every two hours. They're not eating. Like, they're actually it's strict non-eating, right? That's the difference. And so, that's why a lot of times, it's like people ask, like, what are you guys doing? And like, it's like, it's hard to even say, like, you know, when you're doing the long fasting, there's some things you got to know with your water and shit. But other than that, anybody can do this. Anybody can eat like this. It's like any fucking buddy, right? And a lot of people I know are coming over to my group and they're, we're all on keto and shit. It's not a fucking keto diet like I've said before. A true ketogenic diet, here's the problem with a fucking ketogenic diet. It takes forever to get into ketosis. That's number one. So most people can't even stick it out because you will go through things like keto flu and shit. And some people, it takes a month to get into ketosis and they never get into the deep ketosis like you would when you're fasting. So that's one massive downfall to eating like just keto routine, keto nutrition with a multiple meal a day routine. See, there's two aspects to a diet. There's going to be the eating frequency and the nutrition routine. So what we're talking about with the snake diet is eating frequency is number one. Number Nutrition is going to be based on whatever your goal is. Now there's vegan, there's fucking keto, there's fucking like, you know, there's just eating like a, some sort of a macro routine, like a custom macro routine you've made up. But the fasting stays the same. You're always fasting for as long as you can. You're always fasting for as long as you can to get the benefits of the fasting, the cranked up GH. You know, the autophagy effect for the cleanse, the cranked up testosterone. Like even like old guys, anybody know what statins are? What well, statins are this. They're another fucking method the doctors give you to lower your cholesterol. Because what happens is your body from inflammation from bad diet, you get, I've talked about this before, you get lesions in your fucking arteries. Cholesterol and calcium come along, try to heal the lesions cause fucking artery blockages. It's not the cholesterol or the calcium's fault. It's your fucking diet and your inflammation and all the sugar you're eating and all the fucking, all the in insulin spikes. So that's another thing. The biggest promoter of fucking inflammation is the insulin spikes. This is another problem with fucking type two diabetics. 
when they get so far gone that they're on insulin injections because now they're storing fucking fat like crazy because the insulin makes your body stash fat. We know this. It'll fucking stash fat. Why do you think a ketogenic diet works? It doesn't make your body stash fucking fat. So then you're on these insulin shots and then you're spiking your fucking goddamn inflammation all the time as well and then you fucking have massive artery issues in the end, okay? So the thing about fasting is it keeps the, your inflammation down so low because it keeps your fucking insulin levels down so low. That's all it is. It's not fucking rocket science. Low insulin equals good. Unless you eat and then it's up and then it drops. But you don't want to be spiking your insulin all day because it's the biggest fucking promoter of inflammation. When I say that, what I'm saying is it's Easter, right? Everyone's eating a bunch of fucking garbage. You're fucking giving your brats fucking chocolate to rot their fucking teeth out of their head. Don't do that because it's fucking junk. The religion is, I actually did a bunch of research. But anyway, we're talking about inflammation. <laughs> Getting off track. I could eat chocolate bunnies every fucking night and a bunch of trash and fast for 23 hours a fucking day. And I will pull better blood tests, less inflammation, and I will have better fucking insulin levels than somebody eating chicken, rice, and vegetables six times a fucking day. True story. If you fed me just, a, if I had my protein fixed, so I had like my 400 gram ribeye steak, and I had some vegetables, and I ate a bunch of fucking chocolate every night. Every night, every night. I will pull better blood tests than fucking Mr. fucking know-it-all health nut that is eating six times a fucking day with a stupid rice, chicken, and vegetable fucking diet. This is a fucking fact. That's how good the fasting works to keep inflammation down. That is how good it works. I showed this with a McDonald's movie. Okay, but I can even take it another step farther. I can eat complete fucking trash. Complete trash. And I will get better blood tests than the fucking joker that's spiking his insulin six times a day eating rice and vegetables six times a fucking day. It's that simple. Lots of keto people are coming from keto groups to you because you were mentioning a big one. Yeah, and the thing was is because I was on a few of those groups before and the one girl booted me off her fucking group. She's the one who wrote that book, Delay, Don't Deny. And she was actually private messaging me because what was happening is it was basically OMAD one meal a day, which doesn't fucking work for fat people because they can eat way too much food in one meal. And see, now the guy that's six feet tall, 170, yeah, an OMAD routine would be good because he's fucking light. If you're fat, you don't need to be eating every day. And this is why a lot of people were, you know, everyone's weight loss. They're all weight, looking for weight loss. So this lady, I kept saying on the group, like, see, she didn't want me preaching longer fasting times in one day. But I knew from experience that you fucking can't lose weight eating a bunch of fucking food every day. It doesn't matter if you're only eating one meal a day. It, it like... You can, if you, you gotta cut calories back like crazy though. Like if you're eating one meal a day, you better be eating like under fucking 500 calories if you wanna see some real results. And then throw into a 48 hour fast at least once a week. <clears throat> as soon as you're eating over a thousand calories and you're some fucking sedentary like female that's not doing much, fuck, have fun losing weight on that diet. It's gonna take you forever. And then the keto diet, same thing. These people are fucking idiots. Like they think that you can eat keto and eat as much food as you can possibly stuff in your face and actually lose fucking weight. Like these fucking people are morons. Like they're like, oh, no, as long as I'm eating keto, I'll lose weight even if I'm eating 5,000 fucking calories a day. Like it doesn't, it's not going to happen. And that's why in the end of the day, you have to fast or else that's the only way you're going to get the wicked weight loss results while keeping your strength is fasting. Like some of the weight loss results people are getting are like, you know, 20, 30, Fucking 40 I even got out of some guys. You know, minimum I usually get if, the, if it's a lady that's, you know, maybe 20 pounds overweight, 15 in the first month. Like shit like this. You aren't going to get any of this shit on any of these other fucking ways because they're fucking me eating frequency is the problem. It's the eating frequency. It's not the fucking nutrition. It's the fucking eating frequency is the problem. So like I said, the best routine is going to be keto nutrition with hardcore fasting what I preach. That's gonna be the best for fat loss. The best for like explosiveness is gonna be something that you've came up with that works for you with some carbs. When you're lean. 
Okay, that's gonna be the best for explosive fucking exercise. The best for endurance, like running, and like long endurance swimming, especially running and things like that, like distance runners, the best routine is gonna be the same as a fat person, but way more calories. It's gonna be a keto routine, a fuckload of calories and lots of fasting. Because then they will have a lot, lot tougher time hitting that wall because their liver glycogen will already be empty so they won't hit that fucking wall at like, you know, at whatever they burn once they've hit like 1,800 or 2,000 cal. Well, your liver will hold about 100 grams of glycogen, 110, four, you know, four calories per gram, 120, sorry. So you're gonna be looking at calories via glycogen in the liver is gonna be right around like 500. So once you, that's when you'll hit that wall is probably about once you've burned about that 500 calorie mark, depending. There's gonna be your muscle glycogen too will be taken into account. So I saw earlier you said that for fat loss it's just low carb and that adding extra fat isn't necessary. What a 200 gram ribeye steak with 500 grams of broccoli with no extra fats. Yeah, like you'd be good. The thing is, you gotta remember, the longer you fast, you better get your potassium in with the snake juice or you're gonna feel like shit. But as far as the food goes, yeah, eat your fucking steak dinner every second day, just knock the potatoes out of it, and you could even eat more than that if you wanted to do 72s. You're not gonna gain any weight doing 72s. If you give yourself a three hour eating window to eat a fucking steak dinner with a bunch of vegetables, and just get rid of the potatoes. And you couldn't even eat the potatoes, except the potatoes are gonna cause you hunger issues 24 hours down the road. That's the problem. Carbs will cause you hunger issues the next night. So that's why you want to dodge carbs. The main reason why you want to dodge fucking carbs. <laughs> My buddy. Ah, uh, shit. So, <laughs> yeah, I hope that makes sense. Is a 10-day fast that has started tonight concern you? No. As long as anybody that's overweight, they've been, as long as they've done some good hard wet fasting, you know, done some 72-hour wet fast, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't concern me because I did a five day dry fast and I actually got into that dry fast way too lean. I think I started fasting at 168 pounds and then I got down to 156, which I hadn't weighed since grade 10. So like I got, that's fucking hardcore when I got down to 156. But like anybody that's fat, like even on day five, if it wasn't for me just feeling like I was literally starving to death because I was, because I was literally starving to death. Okay, at that point I'm breaking down muscle mass to fucking get energy. Because like at 156 pounds, I don't care who you are, five foot seven, 156 pounds when you're like, a, when you like, you know, compete in powerlifting and shit and got a good amount of muscle mass, that's fucking lean. Like I was probably, like I was, without even, like I bet you I would have been sub 7% at that point, like really lean. So I know that fat people, I knew how I felt and I knew if I would have had more body fat on me, I could have easily stretched that fast out, but I couldn't because I was like just fucking out of, and why would I start breaking muscle down just to, for an ego, like just because of my ego to try to fast another day dry? You know what I mean? <laughs> I wasn't even fat in grade five. See this guy here, his name's Ryan Henry. I grew up with him, eh? He's kind of a loudmouth. <laughs> um, other questions I was gonna answer. So yeah, that dry fast should be not even an issue. Like the one girl that's started the dry fast thing, she's done an eight day dry fast. Like, and she's not even the fattest, not even close to the fattest person going into it. So, but just remember, when you're doing the dry fast, eventually your potassium levels will fall off the face of the earth. And because of that, you'll feel weak as hell. Now, I don't know when it'll happen. If I was loaded up on potassium really well going into a dry fast and did no activity, day three, I'll still feel pretty good. But last time, if I knew what I knew now, probably even day four wouldn't have been bad. But definitely day five, you'll start like day four, day five, they'll start feeling weak as fuck and then it's just gonna be a kind of a grind from there to get to the 10 days. Should every fat person that are fasting for 72 hours or longer take, yes. Yes, they should because it's the only way you're gonna keep, pretend potassium is like electricity. Potassium is like your batteries. If you get low in potassium, you're not gonna be able to fire your muscles or shit. 
Okay, you need those two electrolytes, sodium and potassium, especially the potassium if you're not that active, the sodium isn't as crucial. But if you're low on potassium, you'll fucking feel it right away. Like you will hit a wall and you will feel that you're out of energy. And that's when you gotta go recharge the old batteries, okay? So, Chantel, I only lost five pounds in my last seven days. Yeah, because you're, right, it's, you lost five pounds because you're holding water. Because, you, okay, like there's a good example. So Chantel fasted for seven days. So off the top of my head, the amount of fat she would have burnt per day would probably have been close to a third of a pound, let's say. 0.3 pounds, she probably would have been burning, you know, right around a thousand calories a day of fat. So that works out to 0.3 pounds times seven days. You're gonna be about 2.1 pounds, and then she was down probably another three pounds of water. And that's how she got that. That's how that number popped out. She might have lost three pounds of fat in seven days. Uh, yeah, she might have lost close to three pounds of fat in seven days. But that's why. That's why, because her body was not getting rid of water that quick. All it takes, like 500 milliliters of water is a pound. So if your body's holding water, as soon as you drink 500 mils, it's like, bang, you're fucking up a pound. Like, don't. That's why if you're holding water, you really have to focus on measurements and how you look in the mirror. And you got to understand that it's water. Like, log your shit. Log your shit. Like, you know, get on the fucking scale like twice a day. It's not, see, people are like, oh, I don't like the scale. Learn how to use the fucking scale. Learn it. Because then you know. When I get on the scale, I'm never confused. I'm like, okay, this is, I'll guess my weight within a pound no matter what. Because I know what's going on with my body. You should be able to, like, guess your weight. Any given time, if I ask anyone on this fucking group their weight, they should be able to guess it within a fucking pound without even getting on the scale that day. It shouldn't be a big surprise that you're down three pounds. You should know how the fuck your body's working by now, and you should be logging this shit, logging your water, know that you drank a liter and a half of water, know that you drank like, know that you ate like say one kilogram of food, so the total amount of weight is gonna be one kilogram times one, plus 1 1.5 kilograms is two and a half kilos of volume, Right? And then you take a shit. Every time you take a shit, get on the scale before and after you take a shit too. Because then you'll know, oh, this shit was about this heavy. Like everything, you'll know it. It's, 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 okay, you'll know everything about your body. Log your fucking body weight. Get on the scale every time. Have your scale sitting right by your toilet. You know, so when you, before you take a piss, weigh yourself. And then, and then when you get on the scale, also do it properly. Get on the scale with the same routine every time, the same foot forward, exact fucking same. Get on the scale three times in a row. Know how much you, if you have to piss really bad, you're going to be about the same amount of piss every time. Whatever your body holds for a bladder size, if it feels like you got to piss pretty bad, you're going to piss the same amount of fucking piss. So you'll know all this stuff and you'll just get second nature where you're at. You won't be fucking freaking out when you're not losing weight because your body's storing water. And you're not urinating much. And even count, even write down the times in the day, how many times you piss. It'll all make it just that much simple, okay? And also, for anybody that questions why I always say get that fat in you, is because most fat people don't need to eat carbs. And when I first started eating, I was eating a keto routine with the, obviously the long fasting periods. And so just when I wrap my little talks up, that's what I do is I say get that fat in you because I don't want you fat bastards eating carbs. So, everyone have a great night and get that fat in you.